can tell you guys doing so yeah man um so um on this video here what i'll be doing is i'll just be showing you guys like something that i've told you guys before and then i'll just add something else to it you know so basically i'll be talking about how to find your own style as an artist and then then i'll just show you something else that you know will help you in terms of maintaining that that's once you in terms of maintaining your style once you've sort of developed or found it uh before i continue what i will do is i'll i'll start by playing two songs of mine and then what i want you to do is i want you to pay critical attention to just the general instruments and everything else especially the kicks and the hats and everything else so yeah so basically uh, excuse me guys i want to step there um so basically um yeah, these are the two songs. I'm gonna play this song and the song that's falling after. Sounds like this, yeah. Already from that, you could you could hear basically the, the type of kick I use. You could hear the hats, how they sound. It's a close hats. There's a bit of a shake in the background. You could hear the rise as well, and just the general structure of the track. You know, you could you could sort of hear the instruments how they sound. So I want you to also listen to the the next sound, which is going to be totally different from this one, but it's going to maintain those kind of instruments just in a different way and just used in a different way. But you can sort of tell between the two tracks, or well, well, at least I can, between the two tracks, that these two tracks might have been produced by the same person. You understand? So the next one sounds like this, yeah. the rise of the same rise as the, as the previous track. If you pay critical attention you actually realize that on this song I didn't use the I didn't use the, the shaker but instead I used an open hat which is like it's like very low in volume and it's in the background so it sounds like this. So this is a general sound. So let's let's go straight into a topic now, since I've told you that. So basically, um, as a producer, in terms of finding your own style, because what you realize is, so let me just talk broadly, every producer out there sort of has their own sound packs. They have, they have their own drums that they prefer to use. They have their own synths and plugins and everything else that they, they, that they generally use most of the time in their tracks, because th those are the things that make them who they are. And give them their own style you understand so what well, in order for you to be able to find your own style as well you need to also sort of find the instruments that sort of belong to you not necessarily that they are yours alone but like when you use these instruments you create a, a particular sound that is not out there in the market that nobody knows and then develop and work on those instruments and try and master those instruments to a point where you, you eventually just sort of come up with your own style that is totally different and because you're using pretty much the same instruments but you're just twisting them here around here and there and adding other ones every now and again you'll find that eventually you actually find you have your own style you understand so for me for example let me just show you um this is my folder so you have i have your, your typical f studio stuff here 
and then I have my folder here, which is called packs. And under packs, I've got my packs. So these these are all the general packs. You know, these are stuff that I get from people. But yeah, these are the things that are these are the sounds that I constantly use when I'm trying to make that kind of style of music that I was that I made you guys listen to. This is where I look. You understand? So you can already hear that from the song. You heard that. You heard that from the second song. There's a different kick. I might use it. I might not use it. So cut. Uh. Uh. I don't know if you heard this hat, but this is the close hat that I was using on the thing, on the on the song. And this is my common kick. This is a kick that I constantly use for most of the songs. This would be the shaker that I use, and then sampled vocals, open hat. Probably use this one. So these are basically all the sounds that I use when I'm making that kind of style of music. Except what I'll do is, in using these sounds, I'll, I'll probably look here and add something that I don't usually use. You know, add a different instrument that's, that also fits in perfectly. But that doesn't mean that just because I use this instrument once, now I'm going to take it and add it there, you know. Unless I start using this instrument regularly and I, start, and, I, and I sort of learn how to use it and I feel like it adds a different element to my to my style then i might start start taking it or copy it as well and put it in my folder here where i constantly use it you understand and it's critical that you actually create a folder like this and you take you take all the sounds that you constantly use and put them there because you might use them and you find your style and then you make another song and using the same packs only to find that you didn't create the folder so what happens is the sounds that you used will be here but the thing is with this folder here is that as soon as you open up another thing, as soon as you open up another sound, this one, the last one goes away. So you find that the more tracks you make, the more the sounds that you liked and you used go away. Let me show you an example. You see this one is in the tech one, gram sample 11. Let me open this one, in the tech one, whatever. So opening new channel. You see, that one is gone already. You see what happened there. So it just vanishes, it goes away. You don't see it anymore. So in order to be able to find the one that was here, you'd have to go looking for it back somewhere in your samples and say, okay, there it is, it's this one, you understand? And open it again, which is a lot of work, especially if you're like me and you have a lot of um, a lot of packs. And it generally becomes a problem when you have like sounds like these ones, where you don't know where, where they belong. You see, I can't even tell where they are. So I'd have to go to each individual pack and try to find a particular sound. So whereas if you create a, um, a folder like this, then the sound that you like, you can automatically take it, paste it there, and keep it there. You understand? And then to do that, it's very simple. You just go here, window shell menu. It's going to give you a normal Windows menu. You're going to click copy, then you're going to go paste it there. So you're going to say copy, then you come through to your folder, you say window shell menu again. You right click, by the way. And then you're going to say paste, and then your sound will be here. So I didn't paste it. Um, and then that's basically it. So the critical part being that you must start finding sounds that you really like and you feel like these sounds fit in very well together and you've mastered them and you've mastered how to use them and then use those sounds as much as you can in sort of making your songs but use them in different ways don't use them in the same way it's like to a point where all your songs sound the same you know twist them around every now and again but still use the same sounds because here's another thing about the beauty of it is that if you constantly use the same sounds you're gonna master how to mix those sounds you understand say for example with me i already know let's, let's let me tell you let me show you with this one i already know with this one and oh yeah here's another thing like it's, it's not even a case you have to master how to mix them like you can just do this you open it this one here it sounds like this it sounds flat but because i've been using it so many times in my songs i already know that when i'm mixing the song this the sound down to make it fit into the track i'll probably use something like footy reverb to Where's Fruity Reverb 2? The and then it's like this. You understand? And then because I want it to drive on for longer here, I'll probably do something like this here and then decrease the width. So it's not too long. And decrease there. You understand? That sounds too much in the background, so I might keep it in the center like that. Take that out. Do that. You see, that sounds very clean and flat. If I want it to be more spacious and sound like 
it continues for long, the reverb is there for long, like it's in the bigger, wider room. See, so I might do all those kind of things, but like I've sort of mastered how to use that. And then another thing, the nice thing about it is that you can even save this. So if you feel like every time you use the sound, it sounds well mixed like this, you can start saying preset, um, save preset as, you know, then you save it by Casanova, mixed down, or whatever, you understand? And then you save it there. So every time you've made your song and now you're like, okay, oh, I have this sound here. Let me see if, which plugins do I usually use when I'm mixing this sound. Actually, I use Fruity Reverb 2. Open Fruity Reverb 2. You come here, preset. It's going to be here. You're going to find your preset that you save somewhere here. You click on it, Casanova, and then it's automatically going to adjust everything to the way that you usually put it as. You understand? So it sort of cuts down the time as well for mixing down your instruments, the one that you regularly use. And then all you have to do now is sort of mix down the ones that are new, that you don't constantly use, the ones that you just all took from other folders that are random sounds, you know, which make your song different. So that's like sort of a cheat code kind of thing. But then again, with mixing, I mean, like, um, it's never always going to be the same. So you might find that with another song, you might find that you might need to increase the weight a bit, you know. So your the preset that you save is not necessarily useless, but it's just, it gives you a general idea, and then you just adjust here and there. So that's basically that. So you wanna you wanna have your own folder, which you have regular packs that you used, and you wanna use those packs as much as possible. When especially when you want to create a certain kind of style, you wanna use those packs as much as possible, and then and then in using them, you wanna use them differently all the time, because you don't wanna have people who say, ah, all your songs sound the same. You understand? So you wanna have people who say, shit, this song is nice. You know, what a killer. Yo, the next song is a killer. Yo, yo, yo. Take for example destruction bows. Destruction bows, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they probably have certain kicks, certain um, snares, certain whatever, since everything that they use regularly. But because of their creativity, they're able to use those things and make totally different tracks all the time. You understand? And then add new elements to sort of add a twist to those things. So it's like that. Even with heavy K, heavy K is just that sometimes this drum pattern was like sort of repetitive, but its general structure was almost always there. It almost sound these tracks almost sounded the same and then they would twist around every now and again you understand but like you could tell that it's, it's a heavy k track and you just could tell by the drums and everything else you know that this is definitely heavy k the shakers and stuff like that you understand so you also need to to come to a point where it's like you have certain instruments that when people hear these sounds and the way they put together they automatically think of you and say damn this definitely must be too too you know because of this and this here this is this is the one who plays around with the hat like this and he's the one who uses a very nice light kick sort of like this here you understand and then it becomes easier it becomes easier to to like sort of find your own star and you find that it, it, it'll get to a point where for example you won't even have my packs like this which are general anymore you might find that the more you learn the more you grow in production you're able to produce a deep house track you're able to produce a lot in my piano track you're able to produce a gold track you're able to produce a a tech house whatever you know deep tech anything so you might find that you won't have one neutral folder for this but you have my packs and then under my packs you might have even more folders saying deep tech deep house uh go my piano whatever whatever all the all the genres and under each folder you have sounds for those particular style of genres that you are able to produce and you just use those because people who know you from your deep tech side of things will want to hear that kick that's you know gives them that feel that this is definitely you as a deep tech side of things, you know. And then also when you decide to jump around and go to the travel side of things, they also want to be able to say, this is definitely a travel sign that might have been made by this particular artist because there's these elements too, you understand? Mm -hmm. So it's sort of that, it's sort of that kind of thing there, you know. So that's basically the gist of it. That's how you find your style. That's how you, you sort of um, create your own signature. And I mean, I'm not saying that, just by putting all the sounds that you regularly use together, you eventually want to find your style. Obviously, it has to make sense, and they have to come together nicely and then appeal to the people. People must be able to like them, you know. So it's not a case of once you put the sounds together and you use them all the time, now it's going to be, people are going to know that the song is by you. If you're going to put a kick and a hat together and that's your song, how many people have a kick and a hat together, you understand? But if you twist around your hats and you use it differently, and you add something else, people will be like, okay, there's a kick and a hat, but then, so there's black coffee, and so there's two sort of kick in the hat. But I can tell that this is you because your hat is like, <laughs> but something like that, you know, like 
there's a twist to it which all the other people don't have you understand so it's all about finding a space and creating your own style and then eventually finding people that like it you know and that's basically that and then another thing that i want to i want to talk about is that let's say you found your own style now and you've got your folders here of all the different styles that you regularly use when you're producing different um genres so what you want to do next is you you want to make as many songs as possible for the different using the different packs so for example like i have those two songs that i'm using these packs yeah you wanna like the more you make songs and you feel like this sounds like a deep tech song and i really like it you finish it off and export it as a zip file the reason being why i'm putting emphasis on this is because even if you don't finish it off just like save the file and then save it somewhere where you store all your files and then make sure you that you always have the, the the zip file because the zip file will help you to store the sounds as well so for example like give me a case up with me i had lost my i had an old laptop as you guys know and then what happened is i, I bought this new one so i still need to go buy that cable i don't know what it's, I don't know what it's called where i can connect my laptop hard drive as a usb and then take everything that's in that hard drive and put it into this laptop but the point is because that hard drive is still there and i can't switch on that laptop i'm basically starting all over fresh and collecting and creating this folder here you know but already you can see i have all the sounds that, that i used on those two songs and you're wondering how did i do that and that's basically the point i'm getting to that save your zip files so that let me just show you so that you can do this here you can come to your song files you can say uh let me see 2016 see these are the two zip files here so automatically what i need to do is just open it like that it's gonna open up and then these are all the sounds that i use for this song you understand so even if i had lost the actual folders on f studio for whatever reason but i still have access to the sounds from here so i just need to export these sounds into a neutral folder and then come here again demons open this song up export the sounds into the same folder as that one so that in case there's this sound which matches which matches which is also then the sound on that on that zip file then you can just copy and then it's you can replace it you know so you don't have to double the sounds and then you, basically what you have is you eventually build up your your folder again so then eventually once you have your folder okay let me do this for you let me just just show you quickly what i mean let me do this so here's what you're gonna do and then you're gonna leave the the the, the, the this thing alone basically then you're gonna say extract specified folder they say desktop let's say New folder is a new folder option here. Yeah. Okay, I don't know how to create a new folder here. Uh, let's do downloads instead. Yeah, seems fucking good. But let me just go here and save them. Let me show you here. Let me create a new folder from here. Uh, what did I do? Okay. So let's say new folder like that okay let's close this close this so you have a new folder there then you come to downloads you going to go to a new folder where is it ah why is this thing fucking up my let me see am i the only one who's not seeing this new folder it's not there okay well basically yeah, let's say that you have your new folder there let me just put on desktop then you say okay then it's extracting all the sounds to the and there you are then you just copy all of these things all of these sounds these are all the sounds that you're going to use right you just say cut then you go to your pocket or c or whichever letter put it your c drive basically image line and for studio data patches packs create a folder here like i did my packs paste it there and then eventually you're gonna have all your sounds back again so the zip files sort of help you to recover the exact sound that you use when making those particular songs you understand and you can do that to basically extract all the all the packs that you had you know so that's 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 like the advantage of that so that's how you basically keep well that's how i do it. that's how I, I sort of maintain my my style you know like when i'm making that particular style of house music um and then you know it varies man like so obviously like with as the more you make songs the more you're gonna feel like actually um 
um, I've made this kind of song. Let me start working more on this kind of genre and you start finding your own style in it as well. And then once you do that, you, you also feel like, okay, let me start saving sounds that I constantly use in that particular style. So I'm going to just jump around and I want you to just, like in closing, I'm going to play you some other songs from here, which don't sound exactly like like um, these songs, but there's like certain elements that I use, which I still like, and I want to develop those styles. For example, with this one here, the one that's playing now, I also want to work on it. I think it needs proper mixing and mastering and maybe a vocal. And it will sound very nice. It will sound like your, what do you call it? I don't know what, what genre it is, but yeah. That's a very old song. Here I was trying to work on my goal. So this is the one that I also feel like needs there's a bit of touch-ups but with this one i actually use the same sounds that i used there i just didn't use all of them and i made i didn't make it like a, a promo i didn't give it the promo feel like i did with these ones i just made it feel slightly different and you know i don't know what i don't know what genre i'd call it so you guys tell me the subpoena or whatever that's how this there at the at that at that part there but you hear you find that i actually don't have i actually don't have it on my thing on my list of sounds that i constantly use you see but it's here it's on recent files i'll show you on recent files i think i've used it recently before it's there it is you see but because i don't use it that much i haven't put it in that folder there even though it's on this song i haven't put it in that folder there and these are all songs by the way these are songs from last year so this one you can automatically hear that whoo, which is also there and there and you can also hear the closed hats which was also present in these two songs so basically here you can also already tell that i use the same sounds that i used with these songs here guys know that song so that's basically it guys just to summarize things up you know so for taking long start creating a folder where you put all the sounds that you regularly use in that folder so that through using those sounds constantly when making that particular genre of music that you're making you start having your own style it becomes easier to master the sounds and how to mix that mix down those particular sounds because you'll be using them for so long and then what else and basically retrieving those sounds if you happen to lose them you must save your zip files, whatever files that you, songs that you make. Even if you don't like it, just save it still. Then go to it when you lost it, your stuff. Open your zip files. We extract the sounds like I showed you before. Then you put them back on Level Studio. And you still have your sound packs that you constantly use. You know, so you're going to lose like one or two maybe. But most the, the, the general 90% of them will still be present and will still be there. So that's what you want to do, guys. And that's it, man. You know, I'm sorry for taking long. I always do this. I always vanish for some time and then come back and apologize. But anyway, yeah, life is a bit busy, guys. So I'm not as free as I was before to make videos and stuff. But I'm going to try and make these as much as I can. So, yeah, 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 man. Like, subscribe, comment, Facebook, SoundCloud, Twitter, follow. All that jizz there, you know. Peace. Shop, shop, my friends.